The tools and the frameworks that we use in programming have gradually changed over time, but one thing that stayed consistent is version control with Git. It helps to think of Git as a history book for your project that records all the individual changes that you have made. It allows you to revert back to older versions of your code, and it significantly simplifies the development process when you're collaborating with others. If you've only just started out with programming, then it's easy to overlook the advantages that Git has, because starting out, you might ask yourself the question, why overcomplicate everything with all of this Git magic if you can simply use the undo and the redo button to flick through the history of your project? But as soon as your project becomes more complicated and you start collaborating with others, that won't be sufficient anymore. So in this video, we're going to break down the essentials of using Git. The first thing that you need to do in order to get started with Git is to initialize a repository whose changes you want to track. This is simply going to be the folder on your local computer within which your project is going to be saved. I'm going to be using the my project folder and I'm going to initialize this folder by writing git in it. If you execute this and then view your folder, you'll see that there is a new file called .git. Within this folder is the logic that provides us with something we call the staging area and the local Git repository. When you use Git, there are four areas that you should be aware of. First off is the working directory. The working directory is the place where your local copy of the project is stored. In my case, it's this folder right here, the my project folder, that contains the .git file. When you make a couple of changes to your project, you might only want to select a few of those to be written into the history book of your project. And that is exactly where the staging area comes in. The staging area is also known as the index or cache, and it stores all the changes that you want to put into the history book of your project. And the logic for this staging area is also stored somewhere in that .git file. Next up comes the history book that I just mentioned. You don't actually call it history book in Git terms, you call it the local repository and that is also stored within the .git file. The problem with only having your own history book on your own computer is that if your computer breaks, then your entire project is gone. That's why we should always store a copy of this history book somewhere in the cloud on a service such as GitHub. And that is usually what we call a remote repository. Now let's go ahead and make a change within our local repository by creating a new file called hello.py and within it, we're going to write print hello. In addition, we're going to make a second file called by.py, and within it, we're simply going to write print by. In the user interface, you can already see that it has tracked the changes that we have made. As I mentioned earlier, all the things that go into our history book need to go through the staging area. To add all the changes that you've made to your project to the staging area, you can execute git add full stop. If you're using VS Code, you can see that in the user interface, the changes have jumped under a new ribbon called stage changes. And if you want to feel like a pro and not use the user interface, you can always execute git status. This will show you all the modified files within your working directory that are currently staged. So it's no surprise that in the terminal, you can currently see the files by and hello being printed out. If you change your mind and want to remove things from the staging area, you can always write git reset. This will remove the changes from the staging area, but it will retain the changes within your working directory. So your local copy of the project will not be affected. Now it's time to write some of the changes that we made into the history book that I've been talking about. So into the local repository. To make things interesting, let's only take the changes that we made to the hello.py file and write them into the history book. We don't wanna do that for the by.py file. Since all the changes that we want to write into the history book need to go through the staging area, we're going to add the hello.py file to the staging area by writing git add and then the file name hello.py. If we now recheck the git.status, you will now see that one file is highlighted in green and that is the hello.py file, which we are going to write into our history book. The by.py file is highlighted in red, and that is not going to go into the history book. To now proceed to write into the history book, we need to use a command called commit. We're basically committing to write into the history book. And the special thing about commits is that we always need to add a message to our commit. 
That's helpful because whenever we want to track back specific changes, we always have a message that we can refer to. So let's go ahead and write git commit hyphen m, which is short for message. And then in quotation marks, we're going to write first commit. If you've been following along so far, then congratulations on your first commit. But what I want to do now is really drive home the concept of the difference between the local working directory and the local Git repository, which is our history book. So on the one hand, we have the working directory, which is currently what we have open in the editor, which are the two files we created, hello and bye, with the two print statements, hello and bye. And all of this is stored within the my project folder. So now when we want to find what's written inside this history book, it might be tempting to go into the .git file and search in there somewhere. And surely you will find a couple of things that look familiar to you. For example, if you click on the commit edit message, you will see that it contains the most recent message that we added to our commit when we wrote into the history book. But other than that, it's going to be very difficult to find any other things that look familiar. So to look inside of this, we need to use the terminal. The first most intuitive thing that you might want to do is to check what files have you got written in your history book. And that's quite simple to do. All we need to execute is git list tree hyphen r and then list the commit hash that we had from our very first commit. All this does is it looks through the file tree recursively, that's what the R stands for, and it gives us all the individual files. In the terminal, you can see the file hello.py, which is the file that contained the changes, which we committed to our history book. And it shouldn't be a surprise to you that we don't see the by.py file, because after all, we didn't stage the change and we didn't commit it to the history book. Another thing that's worthy to mention is that instead of using the most recent commit hash, you can also use the word head because it corresponds to it. So you'll see that if I execute git list tree recursively and then insert head instead of the commit hash, I get exactly the same result. One thing that you might be wondering is if it is possible to look inside these files which are within our local git repository. And that is in fact possible. You can write git show then head afterwards a colon and then write out the file name, which is hello.py in our case. And once executed, you will see it says print hello, which is precisely what we have in the hello.py file within our local working directory. Up until this point, we have been making all the changes to our project on the master branch. You can see this by writing git branch. You'll see that at the moment, there is only one branch. It is called master and you can see that it's active because it has a small star next to it. The master branch is usually the main version of your code and is most stable. New features and changes are often developed in something that we call branches that separate away from the master branch. Now let's assume that we want to develop a new feature, but we want to make sure that during the development, our changes don't have an impact on the main branch, which is running productively. In that case, we would create a new branch by writing git branch and then the name of the branch, which I'm going to call my branch. Once I do that, I can again write git branch and you will now see that in addition to the master branch, which is still currently active, I have the new branch, which is called my branch. To activate this new branch and to commit all future changes to this branch, we can go ahead and write git checkout and then the branch name. You can see in the terminal that it says switched to branch my branch, which means that now the active branch is the new branch we just created. At the moment, the contents of the master branch and the new branch my branch which we created are identical. In the user interface, you can see one remaining change. Specifically, it is the change where we added the by.py file and we add the print statement within to the file. We're going to stage this file by writing git add by.py and afterwards, we're going to create a new commit message to commit this to the new branch. So now we're going to do that by writing git commit hyphen m and then we're going to write second commit and submit this. Now we have the following situation. The branch that we have currently worked on has two files, specifically the by.py and the hello.py, 
We can see this by writing git list tree recursively and then head. But this is different to what we have in our master branch. We can check this by going to git checkout master. So we activate the master branch and subsequently writing git list tree recursively and head. There you can see that we only have the hello.py file. So this leads me on very nicely to the next concept, which is merging. Now we have one main branch that has the hello.py file, but we also have a new branch called my branch, which has both files, the hello.py file and the by.py file. Specifically, what we want to accomplish by merging in this particular case is that we want to take the changes from the my branch and merge them into the main branch. We can accomplish this by writing git merge and then specifying the branch from which we want to take the changes. So in this case, it's going to be my branch. And using this command, we are going to merge all the changes from my branch into the currently active branch, which is the main master branch. After we have merged, the contents of both branches is identical. Up until this point, we've got a good understanding and a good foundation of how to use Git locally. But now let's move on to using Git remotely. The first thing that comes to mind when we think about using Git remotely is to publish the Git repository that we have locally onto our GitHub accounts. To do that, we simply create a new repository within our GitHub accounts and specify the name. And after we click on create repository, we get the instructions of how we can upload the project that we have created locally to GitHub. The first command, git remote, adds a connection between our local repository and the remote repository in GitHub. Following that, the second command, git branch, renames our branch from master into main. And finally, the last one, git push, pushes our local repository onto GitHub. And after executing these three git commands, we can refresh our browser and we will be able to see that our project has been deposited onto our GitHub account. As you can see here very clearly, I have the by.py and the hello.py. And if, for example, we go into the hello.py file, you'll be able to see I have the print statement hello that we also added locally into the project. Now, the final concept that I want to bring to your attention is how to pull changes from our GitHub to our local repository. So let's go ahead and make a change by editing the file and changing hello to hello world and subsequently committing these changes in GitHub. We're going to leave the standard commit message and commit the changes. Subsequently, we can go back to our VS code and write git pull and after we execute this, you will see that it now says print hello world and the changes that we made in GitHub are now also available to us locally. There's actually a whole lot more that we could cover on Git, but if you have understood everything up until this point, then you have an excellent foundation. If you want to read up more details on the topics that we've covered in this video, then I'll be leaving a link down in the description below to my website where I cover all of these concepts in far more depth. That being said, let me know in the comments down below what other topics you would like me to cover in the future. And as always, we'll see each other in the next video.